Hey everyone, this is Blendmaster here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to create this cool space scene inside of Blender. Now, this isn't going to be an actual 3D environment which you can move through. It's going to be a 2D image that we're going to create through some compositing tricks using Blender's compositor. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is name our layer stars, and I'm going to delete this lamp and head over to Cycles Render. This cube here is going to be what's emitting our particle system. So let's create our particle. I'm going to head over to the second layer and add an icosphere. And I'm going to give it a subdivision surface modifier level 2 and some smooth shading. I'm also going to give it a new material and name it star and set it to emission and give it a pure white color. And I'm going to change the background color to black. Now I'm going to open up a new window and change it to the node editor. And basically what we want is to create the star which emits light, but it, we want to have a fall off so that it fades out towards the edge of the star. So to do that we're going to add a mix shader and a transparent shader. And to get the fall off that we want we want to add a layer weight node and plug in the facing value and set the blend to 0.95 and that's looking perfect so I'm gonna hide our subsurf modifier right now because when I add the particle system it would lag with that many vertices so I'm gonna add the particle system right now I'm gonna set the end frame to 1 and I'm gonna set the number to 500 that's looking good now Instead of having these particles emit from the faces or vertices, I want them to be spread around inside the cube, so I'm going to set it to volume. That's looking good. And in the render settings, I want to uncheck emitter so that our cube doesn't render. I'm going to select object and select our icosphere. I'm also going to bring up the random size to 1 and bring down the size of our stars to 0.01. That's looking good. Now in front view, I'm going to press Control alt 0 to snap our camera to view. And then in top view, I'm going to drag this camera in on the y-axis to right about there. And if we go to rendered view, we can see what this looks like. And it's looking pretty nice. So right now, it's not very dense, and there's not a lot of stars in our scene. And I want there to be a lot of stars, so to do that, we're going to add some children. We're going to set it to simple. And right now it looks really weird. And that's because this rate, uh, roundness size is set to zero. So we want to set that to uh, maybe one. And that's looking good. I'm going to bring this radius size to one as well. And that's looking pretty good. I'm also going to increase this random size here to one and decrease the size to 0.75. That's looking really good. And I like how many stars there are right now. So if we were to render this with a hundred children, it would look really dense. So I'm going to set this down to 10 so it'll be the same as our display. I'm also going to go to top view and duplicate our cube and move it back so that it's overlapping a little bit here. And I'm going to press this too so that we create a new particle system for this. And I'm just going to change this seed to about 5 so we get some variation of where the stars are. And we can get a little bit more stars in the background that aren't as bright. And for our render, I'm just going to set the samples down to 1 and render this out. And that's looking really nice. So now we'll create a new scene and name it color. And this is how we're going to create our nebula effect like this. And if you guys have seen my abstract wave tutorial, you'll know what I'm about to do. It's pretty much the same method, but we're going to duplicate it and create some more uh, cylinders. So in edit mode, I just rotated it. And now I'm going to delete these two side faces, and I'll select everything, scale it on the x-axis by 6, and then add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl-R and type in 10. 
whoops, control R, 10, and enter. Now I'm going to go to object mode and give it a subsurf modifier, level 2. I'll just copy that two times. But the last one I want it to be set to 1. And then I'm going to add in a displacement modifier. And I'm going to copy that. So I want this first displace modifier to be above or below our first subsurf modifier. And I'm just hiding everything right now so our viewport doesn't lag. And I'm collapsing it as well. So this displace modifier, we want it below our first subsurf. And the second one, we want below our second subsurf, just like that. I'm going to give this a new texture and name it Big. I'm going to go over to the texture settings give it a cloud texture, set the size to 1, and change this strength to 2.5 or 2 .5, so that it'll be really big. And we can take a look at that now. That's looking pretty good. I'll unhide the next subsurf and displace modifier. And we're going to name this one small. And I'll go over to the texture and bring this size down to 0.1 and I'll bring the strength down to 0.1 as well. And that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to create our material, so let's have, head over to Cycles Render. I'm going to give it the same star material, but I'm going to press this too so that it makes a copy of it, and I'll name it Nebula underscore Blue. I'm just going to expand this node window here, make the background black, go to rendered view and we want to swap the emission and transparent shader like that and set this blend value to 0.1 and then I'm going to drag all of these back duplicate the mix shader emission shader and layer weight node and for this emission shader I want to set the value to 2 and I'm going to set this blend to 0.01 now I'm going to give this emission color a nice blue color, something like that. Okay, and before we duplicate this, I want to add some variation in edit mode by selecting faces and turning on proportional editing and just moving stuff up and around like that. You can move it up, you can rotate it just adding some variation will help make this look a lot more interesting and like that I might select that and rotate it somewhat and I'll tab out of edit mode that's looking good I'm just going to rotate this by 90 on the x-axis so we can look at it from the top view and that's looking good so I'll duplicate this one time and this one will be purple so I'm gonna duplicate the material and name it purple we'll give it a nice purple color like that duplicate it again this one will be orange And we don't want this orange to be very saturated. We want it to be very light. So I'm going to come over here after I get the orange I want. I'm going to bring the saturation down to about 0.6. And I'll duplicate this one last time and change it to pink. And for this pink, we don't want it very strong. We want it to be pretty dark. So I'm going to bring the saturation to 0.9 and the value of 0.5. And if we go to rendered view, we can check this out. And it's looking pretty nice. Okay. One thing I forgot to do was plug in this mix shader into the output for all of these. So I'll do that right now. And that's looking good. 
So now I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to go over to the modifier tab and hide our subsurf modifiers and press Ctrl L to link our modifiers. Now they're all hidden. I'm also going to add a camera right now and move it up on the Z axis by 10. Then I'll select everything else and scale it down by about 0.5. And I want to position my blue cylinder or waves over there. My purple one down here, the orange one up there, and the pink one down here. Now what we're going to do is just duplicate each one of these a couple of times and rotate them around in their areas. You can also scale them up if you want. But what you want to do is create some randomness just like that. And that's looking good for the blues. I'm going to do the same thing with the orange right now. And you don't want them to overlap too much into the other colors area because otherwise it'll look kind of weird. So that's looking good. Do the same thing with the purple now. Rotate it like that. Then rotate it some more here. Rotate one there. It's looking good. And then lastly, we have the pink, which I don't want there to be too much of. So I'm going to move it back like this. Maybe scale it down some. And then one more time like that. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to set the samples to 1 and render this out quickly and come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering and this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to head over to the compositor, make sure we're on the right scene, check use nodes and backdrop, and let's get started with editing this. I want to first blur this out slightly. So I'm going to add a blur node, fast Gaussian relative, Y, and then one by one. And I want to add some contrast to this using an RGB curve node. So I'll drag this point down slightly and this one up. Then I'll add some red, and I'll add some green, and I'll add more blue like that. Okay, that's looking good. Now I want to add a color ramp node and we're going to plug in our original image into that and increase our contrast to something like that and then I'll drag in our white to make it super bright. Alright so that's looking good. Now what I want to do is duplicate this blur node like that and then duplicate it again but this time make it 5 by 5 and I want to add a color mix node, set it to multiply, multiply it with this output from the RGB curve, and do that for both of these blur nodes. I'll duplicate the multiply node one more time and switch it to add, and plug both of those two in. And there we go, we got our color nebula for our scene. So Let's just save that image. I'm going to save it as color. And then I also want to save this black and white image as well. As black and white. Now I'm going to head over to our star scene here. Check use nodes. And I'm going to move these around like that. And I'm going to add in our two images. First we'll add in our color, and the second we'll add in our black and white image. Now with these stars, I want to blur it out a little bit. So first one, fast Gaussian, relative, y, 0.5 by 0.5. And I'll add in another one, and this one will be 0.1 by Point one. Okay. Now for our color image here, I want to duplicate the blur node 
we're going to blur this out a lot. We're going to set it to 25 by 25. And I'm going to add in a hue saturation value node so that I can darken it by setting the value to 0.5. And now I'll add a color mix node, set it to add, and then plug in the original colored image. And that's looking pretty good. So now what I want to do is duplicate that, set it to multiply, and multiply the output from our blur over there. And we're going to do this with the other blur as well. Now for the blur that's set to 0.1 by 0.1, we want to change the saturation of our color image to 0 and the value to 1 so that it'll just affect the brightness of our starry area. And for the second one, we want to add an RGB curve after it so that we can brighten it up a lot like that and also make it a lot more bluer just like that. That's looking good. So now I'm going to duplicate this add node again, plug both of them in, set the factor to zero, so it's like that, and then add in our glow, just like that. And that's looking really good. So now I'm going to come here to our blur, black and white image I mean, and I'm going to duplicate this blur set it to 1 by 1, duplicate it again and set it to 0.5 by 0.5, add in a mix node, set it to add so that we can add both of these blurs together, duplicate it and set it to multiply so that we can multiply it with our colored image like that. Then I'll duplicate our hue saturation value node and bring the value up to 2 duplicate our add node again, plug in this colored image, set the factor to zero, and now we can see when we change this factor we're actually increasing the brightness here and adding some slight detail. So I'm going to set that value to about 0.5, so that looks good. Now we'll duplicate this again, add in our stars this time, and we want the stars on top and our nebula on the bottom. You can slowly increase this factor until you get something that looks good for you. I think I'll set this to about 0.25. That looks good. Now I'm going to add in a color balance node so I can tweak the colors a little bit. I want to change this first color to a slightly pink red color like that but I don't want it too saturated. And I also want to increase the second one to a more bluish color. And then the last one, I'll make it more orangish, like that. And that's looking really good compared to our other image. And I'm going to duplicate our add node one last time and plug in our stars like that. I might set this one to 0.5 and I'm going to switch the two like that. And that's looking really good. So now if you want you can tweak the images a little more like the color area here if you want. You might want to make these a little less saturated like that. But other than that, that's looking pretty good. So just go back here, control shift and left click the last node, and there you have it. A cool star space scene done completely inside a blender. So I hope you guys learned something new from this tutorial. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please share your results with me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with your own interpretations. So thanks for watching, and bye.